you like it, let's go Come on, baby, let me hear you say Oh, oh, I wanna kiss you with the neon lights in your eyes um, So, when, it, when, when I signed to Warner Brothers, obviously, uh, you, I was writing uh, Every day I was in town a lot, so I was writing every day I could And, and when, when, I, when I go to write, I just go to write the best song that I can write And, uh, and obviously hopes that you know, it makes my record, but Nashville has the best men and women songwriters, you know, uh, in in the world. And they're, and they're writing somebody's writing a song right now that could make my next record huge. Might be the next big hit for Chesney. Or what's great about it, it could be never heard for five more years. But then some guy or girl moves to town, and that song just happens to sneak through, and it changes their life. You know, so uh, I believe that my job as an artist is to make the best record I can make uh, for the fans, whether I write the songs or somebody else is writing them, uh, a songwriter that's sitting there and that's putting all, they're all into, into three minutes, you know, and with the hopes of somebody cutting it so they get a chance to live their dream, you know, and, and they get a shot at, at, uh, at, 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 at making a living and doing what they love to do, you know, and, and, and so um, in, in the process of, uh, of writing, um, you know, my A&R team at Warner was going through just, I mean, I guarantee you, we probably went through over a thousand songs. Uh, to narrow down to like a, a demo disc that they would give me of maybe 30 songs and I would narrow those 30 sound, songs down to a couple that I liked on that and then uh, as well as pitching my own stuff in um, to, to, to make the record and so but uh, you know I was just I would compare my songs to their songs and you got guys like Casey Beathard, Ashley Gorley, Shane McAnally uh, uh, you know I mean the list goes on of, of uh, Jimmy Robbins you know who's uh, so one of the, some of those talented people uh, in, in Nashville, and, and, and they're sending you their, their, their music, going, hey man, you know, we'd like you to cut this. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm not, I'm, like I said, my job is to make the best record, so I lined it up to what I was writing, and if it was better than what I wrote, I went to my publisher and said, pitch this, and I'm gonna cut this. And you know, because of that, I got songs on other people's albums. I got I wrote the new Big and Rich single with John, and, and uh, so it was, a, it was a long process of narrowing down a lot of songs. It gets hard during that last, uh, when you're down you're there, oh, you got, Four more spots, you know, for the record, and you, you got ten that you love, you know, and you're so it gets it gets tough, but uh, but I, I love the record. That Playing live has changed has changed me. I've been able to tour. Uh, we were on the Lipstick Graffiti tour the same hunt. For that, we were out with Chase Rice, uh, and then just going out with different other artists maybe you know for a weekend or a couple weeks or whatever it may be and we did some shows with Kip before jumping on the Wild Ones tour and just learning from my peers and also learning from the crowd and 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 just being better as far as knowing what's going to work on a record and what's going to work live because a lot of times you listen to a song and it might be great you know on a record but it doesn't go over live or it might be great live and it doesn't have that same feel on a record um, and so I, I, I personally feel like I will probably I will shoot to write more on the second record. I mean, I know that's a little bit of waste, but I'm a guy that likes to think, think forward um, because I feel like I got a better grasp uh, as to as to what I'm looking for, you know, because of playing live. Uh, and and a lot of that's came from writing writing with all these guys that that you know uh, that I cut their songs on men and women. I cut their songs on uh, that I learned from in a writing room, and then I get to watch those songs or watch other people. Uh, how they connect with fans, you know, and it's just it uh, it's it's changed it's changed uh, a lot of my recording process, a lot of my rap process, a lot of my life. Yeah, I think I think you know what 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 what's happened in country music in the last you know five years, ten years. I think what it is is, and I'll use myself as an example. I grew up playing and listening to a lot of classic country. My first taste of any music was Ray Price, Porter Wagner, Bobby Bear, Earl Thomas Conley, Loretta Lynn. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, my family had a band. My grandfather was, uh, it was my grandpa, my dad, my three cousins, and my uncle. And they traveled around Florida and they played classic country uh, up to the 80s country. You know, that was out then. So John Anderson's a big influence on me. Uh, George Strait, obviously. Um, so I had that growing up, and then my dad was the one that brought, you know, he grew up in the 70s, so he was the rock, you know, and he loved the class, but he was the Skinner, and the, you know, uh, as you know, Seeger comes out, and John Mellencamp, and he was the guy that introduced that to me. Um, and my mom was listening to Boys to Men and Michael Bolton, you know, and then I, I grew up in the 90s, so I was, Gary Allen was a big influence, Tracy Lawrence, obviously Garth, Clint Black, uh, 
you know, uh, Trisha Yearwood, I mean, just as far as the songs go, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than some of those 90s story songs. Um, and I grew up on punk, 90s punk and, you know, 90s hip hop. So I think what you get is you, you're getting a generation where it was raised on such just massive spectrum of music. You know, you just didn't have a house that was just listening to country. You're just listening to that. So I think um, a lot of what, what has turned it was uh, you know, just people taking what they loved of what they grew up on. You know, you take a little bit of this and the storytelling of this, and maybe a riff from a you know, Green Day song, and a you know a lyric or a melody type of Tracy Lawrence, whatever it may be, and you just you you mix it together. So I think that that was what kind of took everybody by surprise was it was just all of a sudden it became this live, you know, massive you know partying songs, you know, and uh, and but. You know, that's, you know, the, the live shows that we all learned that from Garth, you know, I mean, that's, that's the guy that brought that to the, brought it to the format, let us know that, hey, if you can't afford fire, you throw fire on stage, you know, if you can afford it to shoot confetti all around an arena, you shoot confetti all around an arena, because um, you want to make a concert, I'll never, because Garth was my first concert, and I'll never forget it, I was 12 years old, and, and we were up on the second level, and he just, that moment, you know, I'll never forget when he started playing the dance, and he had, how many thousands of people that the uh, arena held just in the palm of his hand. And that's, what's, that's what we're supposed to do as entertainers is make those moments for people. You know, if it's a party song and they're shooting fire, that should be a moment that somebody looks back on if they're with their girl or their, or, or, or their friends or their buddies, whatever it may be, and go, man, do you remember when we did? You don't remember that moment. Or maybe it's that first kiss of whatever song that's at that show. So, um, uh, I, so on, on my record, I wanted, I wanted to show the more of whenever I... I lean more towards story songs. You know, one of my favorite songs on the record is a song called Wish I Was Here. Uh, it was written uh, by three of the most talented songwriters in, in Nashville. And, uh, as soon as I heard that song, just a play of words on it and, and, and the, the, just the lyric content to it and the story of it, uh, I fell in love immediately, you know, and was like, I gotta cut this song. And, and uh, other people had it on hold and luckily it, uh, you know, for me, it landed, you know, it landed with me. So. Yeah, yeah, I, and like I grew up, I didn't have a computer in my in, in the house we grew up in. Um, so when it first started, I was slow to it, man. Like I didn't get Twitter at all. Now I live on it. But like before, I was like nobody. I didn't have anything going on, so I was like nobody cares. I just woke up and you know brushed my teeth. Like who gives a crap? And so, uh, but as you start growing and you start seeing like you know, uh, you know the, the fans talking to you, and then you're just a button away from communicating or you know communicating with them or. You know, a lot of times if a show's not sold out and somebody hits me up on Twitter, hey, you know, I wish we had tickets or whatever. If we have extra tickets, we'll throw them tickets to the show, meet and greets or whatever it is. And so it started growing on me because I, I thought to myself, I said, man, how cool would it be if I was 15 and I tweeted at Gary Allen, or for instance, you know, and he tweeted me back. Like, that would that'd be freaking awesome, you know, or if I wanted to meet him and he actually threw me some mean greet passes, you know, that. So I love the fact that it broke down the, the, the barrier of, of, you know, I don't like the, I don't like the whole I'm here and they're here. You know, it's just weird to me. I don't like, uh, I want, I want to know them. I want them to know me. I want, you know, I answer as much as I can on, on, on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. And, and I'm getting better at it at social media. It took me a minute to get, to get used to it. But, um, I think it's, it's, it's broken down so many barriers, especially as far as uh, international, internationally goes, uh, you got a song and somebody tweets out a lyric or tweet, you know, I mean, I, I've gotten so much stuff just out of fans videoing a show. And that 15 second clip has gotten, you know, it, it, it reaches so much more than just a 15 second clip, you know, uh, uh, that, that they just threw up as a fan going, hey, we had a great time, love the song, or whatever it might be. Because um, you don't know who they know. You don't know who might see that from, you know, wherever, Canada or Australia or wherever it might be. And the next thing you know, stuff starts growing at all because of social media. Yeah, lights in your eyes. Blue.